on! This playlist. The creepiest playlist. On the on your channel, probably. <laughs> no, the one with the, the Swedish video. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. Well, yeah, that was actually. Yeah. That's not this playlist, is all on the video. video. Shh. <laughs> if you're listening to this, what is the Swedish video? The last aliens. A Swedish video might entirely. We do. Right. Um, <laughs> No, it's not that Swedish video. Right. Uh, uh, with a uh, towel, with a... No, anyway. Uh, okay. <laughs> Seven digits. One, one, two, three, four, oh. five, and six. Oh. <laughs> are arranged in random order in a line. Great. Thank you, Monty, that they form the number one, four, five, two, one, six, three. Well, it's a slightly odd start to a question. It's an odd way of saying that that is one arrangement out of all the arrangements that that could possibly give. So really, the question is saying, how many arrangements are there, isn't it? That's, that's what we're being asked. So all we need to do is to think, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven numbers. Two of them are the number one. So we're going to do the calculation seven factorial over two factorial. I did that calculation. It gave me the answer of two, five, two, zero. That's the total number of arrangements. That is exactly one of those total number of arrangements. So the probability of it being the arrangement 1, 4, 5, 2, 1, 6, 3 is 1 over 2, 5, 2, 0. The problem that some of us have was some of us thought, I'll be clever, I'll do 7 factorial over 2 factorial because there are two identical ones. And then they looked at that and thought, oh, but hang on, those ones could be either way around. So I'll write a 2 on top of this. But of course, at that point, you've taken into account the two ones twice. You've kind of double counted them being in there, so you get your probability wrong. So that, that is where you take into account the fact that there are two identical ones. Now, it gets more complicated, doesn't it? Three of the seven digits are chosen at random without regard to order. How many possible groups of three digits contain two ones? The thing about this kind of question is your, your aim is always to try and make things as simple as possible. So don't overcomplicate this, just try and see if you can get this in the simplest possible terms. What does it mean for two of the three digits to be ones? <coughs> that means we have one more space for a digit. We have to choose one digit to fill the remaining space and there are five digits available. So if we're going to have two ones, we then need one from the remaining five. Uh, why am I writing the word one? One, one from remaining, <coughs> it'll do five. We use it. Okay, so there are five remaining letters. We need to choose one of them. How many ways could we choose one number from five? Five. Each of them. So there are only five possible combinations where there is one. That's the answer. That was it. All you had to do. Uh, part B now says how many possible groups of three digits contain exactly one one? That's well, if right. we've done this one this way, keep, keep keeping it simple. Okay, so one one. 1-1 one, one is going to mean that we've got, one of the ones is already chosen, we're choosing two remaining digits from the remaining five. There are still five digits left because we're rejecting one of the other ones. So 1-1 one, one has been chosen. There are the five non-ones of which we need to choose two. How do you choose two from five? 5C2 five gives you an answer of ten. So there are ten ways that we could choose two from the remaining five. And then part C, you can see a kind of flow to this question. You can see how it's all fitting together. How many possible groups of three digits can be formed all together? Well, groups of three digits have either two ones, or one one, or no ones. So the only thing we're left to try and work out is how many possible selections are there 
that have no ones. Well, let's think through how many ways you could get no ones. We're rejecting the two ones completely, putting them on one side. We have five remaining numbers. We need three from five. 5C3 also gives us 10. So we've got five ways you could have two twos selected. Uh, sorry, five ways you could have two ones selected. Ten ways you could have one one selected. Ten ways you could have no one selected. That's all the options. So we're left with 25 as being our total. And that's it. There was a lot, an awful lot of overcomplication. There was the number 840 appearing on a few people's papers with, with no particular reasoning. What's mine? 560 is... Well, that's less. Isn't it? <laughs> it is, it's a little bit more than 25 though, isn't it? But they're, they're, okay, this is the thing, keep it simple. And that's maths. <laughs>